Good morning, church family, and welcome to worship on this Sunday, the 27th of December. So this is the Sunday between Christmas and New Year. It's inevitably a day that we end up looking back a bit and looking forward a bit. And that's really going to be part of our theme today as we carry on this series of Unexpected Christmas. And today we're thinking about an unexpected path. I'm going to open us in prayer this morning. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you that you have brought us together this morning. Thank you that we can come freely to worship you. Thank you for these moments over the past weeks where we've been able just to stop and reflect on who you are where we've been able to stop and reflect on the incredible gift that you gave us in your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that you are here with us. Wherever we are this morning, whatever we're doing, whether we've been up for hours or whether we've just rolled out of bed, thank you, Lord, that you are with us. And we pray, Father God, that we might experience more of you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let me update you on a couple of things uh, before we do something a little bit different today. Um, so first of all, big news, exciting news. Keith has finished, well, he's completed the 10K of his swim that he set out to do in the month of December. He's, absolutely, he's actually smashed it. There's a picture that you can see of him with his medal that he gets for achieving uh, the 10K. That's coming up, that's come up on the screen now. And well, Keith, we want to say well done to you, but I also want to say well done, church family, for supporting Keith, and by supporting Keith, supporting the church building development project. So thank you for everyone who has sponsored Keith. There's still a chance to do it, and the information's on the website if you, uh, if you just want to encourage Keith um, this morning. What's coming up in the next few days? Well, we have for you on Saturday evening, so that's Saturday the 2nd of January, we have for you the big NPBC quiz. Our own quiz master Colin Berry has been studiously working out, um, at, at, at work, work, I nearly said working out there, um, he hasn't been working out to my knowledge, what he has been doing is working on a quiz uh, for us that we're going to have fun with on the second. You simply need to turn up to that. We're going to put all the details out. They'll be on the website. We'll email them to people just so that you can join us on the evening and then we'll put people into teams and we'll have some fun together. Um, so thanks to Colin for doing that. Please do get that in your diary. Seven o'clock on the 2nd of January. Then the following day, the 3rd of January, Sunday, first Sunday of the year, we thought instead of meeting in church online like this, we would start the year as together as we can be. So we're going to do that via Zoom on the 3rd of January. So I do hope that you're able to join us for that. And then on the 6th of January, we're going to have a day of prayer together as a church. Don't get scared. It doesn't mean that you have to spend the whole day on your knees. If you want to do that, fantastic. But you know what? Over the past year, we've seen God move when we've been prepared to come before him in prayer. So we want to do the same thing on the 6th of January as we look ahead to 2021, as we think about Peter Young coming and preaching on the 10th of January with a view to becoming our Associate Minister. But also, as we, want to, we want to put the building project before God as well. And so more details are going to be coming out about how you can get involved with that. So as I've said, this morning is going to be a little bit different. We, uh, instead of there being a long message from me, what we thought we'd do to... Well, <laughs> there's a relief, right? What we thought that we would do today is that we'd actually have conversations. Uh, we, and we've done that with three different uh, people or groups of people within our church family. So Alex and Sarah Millington, Etty Bielbeck and Paul and Hilary Manning. Um, all who've had different years are in different situations right now. Um, but I'm going to chat with them, Natasha's going to chat with them, 
and you'll just be able to watch and enjoy those. Some of those interviews are a bit longer than normal interviews might be, but they are packed full of testimonies of how God has moved in this past year in people's lives. And I just want to encourage you all with that this morning. But let's come to worship him and let's do that as we start with a carol. Why not? Here's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It is awesome that we've been able to join you uh, today, that we're linking up Newport Pagnell and Liverpool. Um, so, Etiv, tell us where you are at the moment, what's going on for you at the moment, right now. Yeah, um, so I'm still working, um, sort of in entry as a radiographer, um, but literally the past few days have been a bit um, chaotic for me. Okay. Um, so, currently self-isolating, awaiting test results back from... Um, one of our um, persons in our bubble. Um, so that will sort of throw our Christmas plans either way um, in the next hopefully few hours. We're just waiting right. yeah, to see what goes on. Um, but yeah, apart from that. <laughs> apart think, from that, apart from pretty that. Pretty standard, yeah, nice and easy, so yeah. <laughs> so would you, you would have been working over Christmas if, yeah. if you weren't self-isolating right at the moment. Yeah, so I was meant to start my night tonight and then would have been working up until Christmas morning and then finished. Right. And then yeah, so wow. it could be quite different. So, um, you'd, so you'd have spent most of the Christmas Day sleeping? <laughs> yeah, which actually might be a best thing if it's, um, <laughs> for me, if it comes back positive, but no, um, yeah, we'll just wait and see, I think, which is, yeah. Yeah, the way of the world at the moment, yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you get a chance to celebrate Christmas with family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, snuck down for a quick trip before it was all locked down, which was nice. And then, yeah, had my Christmas then, so quite lucky with our timings, I think. 
managed yeah. to get everything in, which is good. Yeah. Um, so, so Etiv, tell us about this year for you. What's it, what's it been like? You've been on the front line quite literally. Tell <laughs> us what it's been, been like for you this year. Yeah, um, I suppose it's been a difficult year, I think, for everyone. But um, yeah, it's definitely just been such a chaotic year in terms of like work has been quite sort of heavy um sort of from March continuously since um lockdown started and I think everyone's sort of in the same position where you just don't really know what's happening and sort of what to do and <laughs> like how to cope as well it's such a new situation isn't it that sort of arises and you just have to sort of adapt with it um what, yeah, yeah go on. sorry what was hospital a, a I get the sense it was quite a stressful place to be over this period. Is that is that fair? Yeah, I think especially at the first like few months of lockdown, because um, it literally I don't think well for me my experience is like it just didn't seem like anyone knew what um, they were doing really. It was just all a bit up in airs. People sort of like one say one person saying something and then you'd go somewhere else and it'd be something completely different and it was just yeah. like oh, I don't really know what. What I should be doing but it's just yeah sometimes it's one of those things where it's easier just to do what other people are comfortable with I don't know I feel like I'm quite a chilled person when people tell me what to do um I'm happy just to <laughs> if that makes them happy I'm just like yeah I'll do whatever <laughs> so that I think that definitely helped in some sense but um yeah it's just been chaotic um sort of in just terms of yeah work and then obviously not being able to like go out as well I think for everyone it's just been quite hard yeah um Great. To, like process things differently isn't it so. yeah grateful for the bubble in your house though and, and yeah just... so grateful yeah yeah, yeah. they're great <laughs> yeah Good. so challenging year right challenging for everybody as you've said I, I know your faith is really important to you how how have you seen god move in then a year that's been as difficult as this one yeah um so i think there's probably two ways i was thinking of it's different because like I was thinking about this question like two days ago and it's so different now as to <laughs> what yeah, I probably would have answered. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, literally yeah. two days ago. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like it's something that probably changes all the time the way you see God. But um, I think the first one um, is just in terms of just letting go completely of things that don't matter and that doesn't matter if what happens and not trying to plan like every day, every life, like, you know, just not being able to plan things has almost been a blessing. I think I'm a bit of a control freak in some sense. Um, yeah. like I just want to know what's happening and I want to know what's going on. And <laughs> yeah. I'll just like happily just, yeah, sit and plan sometimes. But um, sort of just been able to um, not do that as, yeah, in hindsight, it's been really good. I think it's sort of a sense of peace and just being able to sort of let go and um, just see what happens and, um, yeah go with the flow a bit more which is a yeah yeah <laughs> bit again. Of a nicer thing in some sense yeah. um which i didn't think would happen in the beginning but god's been honestly such a blessing in that sense it's just letting go and trusting him is um yeah it's been amazing it's like a new thing that i would never have oh wow um, sort of been forced to experience yeah. like it's quite a hard thing to let go isn't it of oh, like yeah. control so yeah forcing it is <laughs> Even in like a world pandemic, <laughs> oh <No, no> well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's really good in that sense. It's sort of the Psalm forty six has just popped up like all year for me. It's just be still and know that I'm God. And yeah. I think that's all we like. Um, I've sort of been aiming to do this year is just be still and let God really do His thing. Yeah, so hard to easy thing to say, so hard to do. But yeah. at, at the same time, it, it hey, how mad that it's taken taken something like this for a few of us to reflect on that sort of thing and yeah and yeah. yeah okay that's good and then from that sort of thing of just little letting go and sort of trusting God and sort of knowing who God is it's that sense of unity I think that mm. I think this year for everyone um has been such a sort of like prominent sort of um blessing yeah um yeah it's just yeah sort of being a light in the darkness for some people on some days and then other days it's other people being the light for you it's just that sort of building each other up and being there for each other um i've definitely seen god like move so much in that um and yeah even just like finding like little joys 
during the day that you just you know you're having a bad day and you're like, oh the clouds look pretty that's great thanks god <laughs> move on and you feel a bit better <laughs> that that sort of thing and um, yeah it's definitely um sort of been a god god thing um just sort of noticing the little things and yeah, yeah. I think, again, what it's done, it forced us, hasn't it, to look at God in the everyday rather than in the big, big moments, actually yeah. recognising God's in everything. I'm a big yeah. believer that all of the stuff we've seen in this community where people have been helping each other out, whether they know it's God or not, I know it's God working <laughs> yeah. through, right? And yeah. that would be a good thing. So. Yeah, 100%. So. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And then there's also one more verse that I sort of want to share. Yeah. Um, if that's right. So the beginning of the year before this all like kicked off, it was like two chronicles. I think it's 20, 20, 20, 21 ish area in the Bible. It's on like the right left hand side of the Bible. You know, when you can picture it in your mind and like, you can't quite. There's a prayer. I don't know how to say his name. Jehoshaphat's Jehoshaphat. prayer. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, which I don't, don't really know why it was like, sort of prominent in the beginning of the year but I think it's just again sort of stuck with me throughout the whole year and there's two bits that sort of stick out so it's um if calamity comes upon us whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine and um, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and we will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us and it goes on a bit and then there's a little bit further on and it says um for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And it's that last little bit that, I don't know, it's just been a little nice, yeah. <laughs> nice little comfort. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love that. There's a, I, there's a New Testament version of it, which I think is in Hebrews, which just says, whatever's going on, fix your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. It, yeah. It's just focus on the simple things. Just focus on God and yeah. yeah. Sort right. itself out. <laughs> Etib, thank you for sharing that with us, partly because I don't have to mm. preach a sermon now. So I've done that. So more than, happy, more than happy about that. Um, you pay me next time. Yeah. <laughs> but but Etib, thank you. Like, and I say, I say thank you, I think, on behalf of the church family in two ways. Mm. One is, is for sharing with us today, but also just for what you do and what all of your colleagues do day in, day out, which I think, you know, this year, maybe maybe after this year, we won't quite take it as much for granted mm. um, as maybe we have done in the past. But uh, we we love you. We want to, you know, we love that we can keep in touch with you, although you're mm -hmm. up in the middle. Um, we love that you're part of our church family. And please know that we're praying for you um, mm. in this period of isolation, but also as you, mm. as you go beyond <laughs> that as well. Amazing. So, yeah. Oh, so, hope, hope you still get to have a very happy Christmas in some yeah. way, shape, or form. It'll be good no matter what. I just want to yeah. know. <laughs> this is what I've been saying, and I'm like, ah, I still can't. <laughs> still can't quite let go of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, All yeah. right. So, It'll thank you. Indeed. Really appreciate it. All right. December night, snow has turned the city white. Well, this old town has gone to sleep, see the church on Second Street. Well, all the faithful now have come, join us in these Christmas songs. Above the clouds to bring us light, it is 
girl and every boy For the highest of kings Let's come down for you and me To bring us life Here to save our lives This Christmas time This Christmas time already and now we're going to hear from Alex and Sarah. Tasha is going to speak to them. Alex and Sarah have been worshipping with us for a little over a year now. Most of you may not even have known that because we've not been together as a church family but I'm grateful for getting to know them. Um, I hope that you by watching this will get to know them a little bit more and their heart for God and their faith uh, and the faith that they have in him. Watch this. So, Sarah and Alex, thank you so much for um, agreeing to do this for us today. Um, we've had a little chat beforehand, but tell everybody in your own words what 2020 has been like for you both. <laughs> words that are broadcastable. At a, at a, I think, I think that's about the, the only way <laughs> to put thing. it. <laughs> 2020 has been a, um, it's been a crazy year, I, I'd say, for both of us. So, um, my company, uh, so I, I'm CFO, so Chief Finance Officer of my company, one of the two company directors, uh, and we run nightclubs. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, this year has not been the easiest year for us uh, as a business. Um, but one would then think that because we've not been trading since March, that uh, of course, there's not much work to do. So we've all, all, all had a bit of a year off. Uh, and I can tell you completely the opposite was true. Um, Aside from the early total mayhem of trying to navigate furlough schemes and uh, get employees, you know, we had 3,000 employees and we had to put 3,000 employees virtually on furlough um, within the space of a few weeks and ensure that unlike many others in the industry who uh, made staff redundant immediately, uh, we held on right till the, the very last knowing that government support would be coming. And so we did everything we could to, uh, to try and make sure that, uh, that we did the right by our staff. And then it's just been a very strange year of, of navigating um, all of that and uh, it's sort of trying to fight for, um, for the company, for survival um, and, and all of those sorts of things. Um, and actually there was one point during the, uh, the middle of the year where for three weeks uh, there were only six of us in the entire company out of 3,000 people who were not on furlough. Uh, and I was one of the six. Just trying um, to hold it all together. So just trying you? to hold it yeah. together. And then the last, uh, the last two months we've been, uh, because unfortunately uh, government decided not to provide any support whatsoever to nightclubs. 
um, our business has, has gone bust. Um, and so we spent the last uh, eight weeks uh, really trying to package up what there is of the business uh, to sell it. And that has been absolutely crazy. But uh, I'm really, really pleased to say that uh, we managed it. Uh, we found new investors for the business and last week on Thursday, um, the sale was successfully delivered and uh, the 1300 employees that we have left are all now safe and secure in jobs for another 12 months, which is terrific news. Yeah, no, that is good news, isn't it? It's good end for a rough ride. Yeah, for Sarah, I think uh, it got equally crazy at the beginning of it all. Well, yeah, obviously, my, I, I work for the Winter Night Shelter, so we're helping some of the most vulnerable people in society, the homeless who've really been hit hard um, uh, at sort of both ends, first in the lockdown happening in March, and then obviously um, uh, needing a lot of support through the year, and then uh, second lockdown and now winter operations. So, you know, in terms of my work, it's been really crazy. And obviously, at the same time as that, I've been holding the whole household together because Alex has been working 16 hour days and I've been homeschooling children who've been off for months on end originally and then gradually one by one as their bubbles are isolating and they have to self isolate for this reason or that reason. And so I just feel like 2020 has been clinging on by our fingertips to survive. And I know that, like, lots of people have got much harder stories than us we're not sort of um woe is me you know because everyone's got their uh every, it's affected everybody in different ways but i would say if i had to sum up 2020 i would use the adjectives um relentless exhausting and stressful <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that sounds good i i get that it's a, it does feel like it's been never ending at um, at some point so in all of that craziness, in all of the stress that goes with it, have there been moments where you have been able to take time out, have that quiet time with God or, or see God working um, in all of that somewhere? I think um, the, the moments like that have been few and far between because having children at home all the time and, and so much to be done, it doesn't lend itself to having much headspace or, or time but so walking the dog has been a godsend that's that's literally yeah, been the definitely. time to reflect oh, that one yeah connect with god um um but i would say i've definitely it's it's weird because given our precarious situation for most of the year not knowing you know I, I, like not knowing if alex would have a job the following month at any point it's all it's everything's been on a cliff edge and i just really made a decision to claim that um, well, the peace that transcends understanding that the Bible promises us. And it was very weird because I, I just ha I did have, despite everything on the surface being so up in the air, I did have this solid peace inside. So like at my, although I was frazzled, I would say at my core, I never lost my peace because I knew that God was with us and it would work out somehow. Um, it's been a roller coaster, though. It definitely has been a roller coaster. I mean, for me, actually, again um this this kind of goes back a little bit this story um but uh, uh when i took the the job that i currently have now uh, i joined the company seven and a half years ago um and it was a huge promotion that i wasn't expecting um at the time from uh from what the company i was previously at to when i joined this and there were so many markers of god at work in me taking that job from uh uh, from from the fact that I was joining a nightclub company and to be honest I've never worked with so many Christian colleagues um, I, I I was my spent my first interview um, discussing with my to then be boss um, uh, about his church and about the things he did at his church my second interview with the chief executive we spent most of it talking about his sister's mission work in Zaire because Sarah and I had spent time working in Malawi um, so it was it was a really sort of strange experience and then followed shortly afterwards by um, after I'd accepted the job, I got a phone call out of the blue uh, from somebody I'd never met who had heard that I'd taken the job and that I was an active member of, uh, of, of a Christian community in Milton Keynes. And he got hold of my number and rang me out of the blue and said, uh, my name's Brian Arnott, I work for the Street Pastors. Uh, and I just want to let you know that we've been praying for an active Christian to join a leadership role uh, in this nightclub company. Uh, and we think you're an answer to prayer. And so for ever since I joined the company, I've always known God's had me there for a reason, for a purpose. And, and it's been a strange journey, never quite being sure why. And it's like this, this twice I've tried to leave the company. And both times I felt, you know, that that door has kind of been closed on it. And actually, um, at the back end of last year, I'd accepted a new job 
I was going to be leaving Deltic um, and I was going to be uh, joining a new, a new business here in Milton Keynes. Um, and I was four months into my six month notice period when lockdown happened. And uh, two weeks later, I got a phone call from the new company saying that because of everything, they decided to pull the job. The job wasn't going to be available anymore. So I was sort of thrust into this momentary sort of period of realizing I had six weeks before my job was over at my current company. I had no job to go to. So I, I rang the board up and said that this has happened. I know you haven't replaced me yet. And I, I, I'd like to stay if there's if you're still willing to have me. Um, they not only uh, accepted that, but they actually uh, I, I got a pay rise at the same time. Um, and and it's like I've looked back at this and always known God has me here for a reason. And it's like, as I say, I've tried to leave, but it, it's like I keep coming back to it and, I, and I'm still here. And maybe part of the reason was rescuing the company and, and saving 1300 jobs this year. But I have a sense there's still more to come and I'm not quite sure what that is. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I've really felt that peace through particularly the last few months, knowing it, it will be fine because God has a purpose. Yeah, I think that I think that's amazing when you know that whole story from beginning to where you are and all those markers along the way have given you that um, peace, as you say, and, and you can look at it as a blessing that how it's all come together. And, and amidst it all, it's really difficult, but um, being able to know the core like you said Sarah that, that, that God's peace is there and he's and he's holding it all together um somehow is is pretty it's pretty cool really so yeah. um, thanks guys thank you for sharing that I think it will um be really beneficial to a lot of people and um I just pray that yeah 2021 will uh, be a lot better um, <laughs> but, we'll, um, but we'll hang on to that peace and and we can see God moving in other ways so thank you so much and uh, we'll see yeah. you in person very soon, hopefully. All right. Since the day the angel came, it seemed that everything had changed. The only certain thing was the child that moved within on the road that would not end, winding down to Bethlehem. So far away from home, Just a blanket on the floor of a vacant cattle store. But there the child was born. She held him in her arms. And as she laid him down to sleep, she wondered, will it always be? So bitter, yet so sweet. Against a 
darkening sky The sun she loved was lifted high With his dying breath She heard him say Father, forgive And to the criminal beside Today with me in paradise So bitter, yet so sweet And is she sealed in the storm by his head a thorn? And is she spellbound in the air on the starry night? And is she here? So, Paul and Hilary, welcome. It's great for, that you could uh, you could be with us this morning. Um, so, I'm asking you, Paul and Hilary, the same questions that we, we're asking everybody else this morning, which is, how's 2020 been for you? Why don't you share a bit with us? Well, it's been uh, a year of uncertainty um, and um, a huge year on about three or four massive fronts. Um, so the first thing is obviously my illness with the yeah. brain tumour and going through all the treatment, which is still going on. I've got two more months of chemotherapy to go. Yeah. Had an MRI last week and we're waiting for the results, so praying for a good outcome. Okay. Um, so that's been hanging over us the whole year. With, um, with that and on top of that we had the sale of the business yeah veterinary practice which was huge because um, we needed to succeed in making it work for the future for the community and all the staff involved yeah and uh, continue the service into the future for the local area yeah. which has been my kind of life's work really well so how long because is it is it nearly 40 years that you've you've been practicing that yeah yeah I, i've been i've been a vet for 40 years because yeah. uh, i qualified in 1979 wow but um i've been in the i started the practice in 1986 okay okay so it's about 34 years yeah uh, in newport pagnell so it's been a huge work and we were very fortunate to be able to go through due diligence and sell it yeah um uh, to, to, a, to a big company that um, will be able to continue in the future. And I've got great, um, uh, great thoughts for the future for it, really. Which is good, isn't it? I think for both of you, when you put all of your heart and soul into something, that moment when you give it to somebody else or sell it to somebody else, you want to know it's in safe hands, don't you? Yeah, you want to know it's... Uh, and we've, we've just about stopped asking questions about <laughs> what's going on today. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just sort of releasing yeah yeah we're just about there really. yeah but um that's been a huge thing yeah um and then we had uh the uh, coronavirus is that the word oh. yeah <laughs> not heard of that yeah <laughs> you know that went on right in the yeah. middle of all this and it yeah. was incredible really uh, because I was still having to run the practice during that whole pandemic. Um, and we, we only sold, finally concluded the sale 17th of November. Yeah. So all of the year, I've had all that on my plate as well. And Hillary's yeah. been involved. So that was huge. Um, and you're going to come to it in a minute. But uh, in the, right in the middle, um, my mum died yeah. um, as yeah. well. Uh, with that, we had a lovely funeral, I have to say, or a celebration of her life. Yeah. Um, and it was 30 minutes, very precious time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was really uh, 
powerful that was. And in spite of only, you know, all the restrictions and only being able to have 10 people there, it was absolutely lovely. And um, <laughs> there was no doubt that God was there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's, let's talk a bit about that then, because I know that your, your story of the year, um, God is at the heart of it. And, 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 and it, in, as you've described, some really challenging circumstances. So tell, tell everybody, share with us, how have you experienced God in this year? Where have you seen him at work? Well, we've seen him um, certainly just following on with my mum, uh, the loss of my mum. He was definitely there. And you could, although, you know, we're not allowed to be together, you yeah. could feel God's presence. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Close, you know. Yeah. Um, and my dad was really moved um, at the time. He said it was the loveliest sort of church service he'd ever been to. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, he said it was so sincere and uh, represented mum and, you know, celebrated her life because they were married for 67 years. So wow. the, the fact that dad could share that with other people afterwards was yeah. lovely as yeah. well you know because that was a witness although he may not have even realized yeah yeah but god was working there um and then during during the um the whole pandemic having to run the business and having to try and sell it right in the middle in uh, in about may um they did two two things happen they paused my chemotherapy treatment yeah. because they thought it was too dangerous to carry on i was too vulnerable so they actually paused it and at the very same time they paused the sale of the business so i i literally fell out of bed several times a night and on my knees uh, to the you know, speaking to the lord <laughs> that was you know, absolutely brought me to my knees, really. Well, being, being forced to wait in that way on two huge things, I mean, that wouldn't be easy at the best of times. But, no. you know, with what you, what, with, you know, the pandemic and everything else. Mm. It really was massive. And I, I, I was completely overwhelmed, really, yeah. except for God being there. Yeah. And uh, one thing it, God really reminded me of in those moments um, was that we can only succeed when we give it all to God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and by heaven, that was true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because that was so powerful. Yeah. I, I was completely flawed, you know, literally flawed. Um, and but God brought us through. You see. Yeah, yeah. All and of that, you know. <laughs> all of that, you say, <laughs> like it was. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and, and and let me bring Hillary in. So, Hillary, what was your experience that while Paul was falling out of bed and on his knees and praying? What was what what was going on for you? Trying to hold it all together, I suppose. But yeah. um, well, we got through it. Yeah. Yeah, Hillary was a brick. <laughs> you know, she, she, um, she, she, does, she uh, tends to hold her emotions back. Um, not now. But not now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, she, she, without Hillary, I needed Hillary to get. We got through it together, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which is as, as you have done with the business, as you have done in, in, in every aspect of life, yeah? And, and, and will continue to. We'll yeah. Continue to. Yeah. So, Paul, can I ask you a question? You said that you, you knew God was there or, or you experienced God. Well, what did that, you know, in those moments when you gave everything to him, how did you know you were giving it to God? What was, can you well, describe that? Yes, well, I've had, I've had a relationship with God for me, most of my life really mm. since age about five or certainly by 11 yeah um and uh so I, I've had um 
a close relationship with God, and that, that is how it is. It's, if I need to speak to God, I just speak to God. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes he comes and taps me on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks too, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, um, oh, you haven't been listening lately. <laughs> we haven't had a conversation lately. Yeah. And, um, but when, it, when you can speak to God and he speaks back, you know, it's just so wonderful, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some people might not have that close relationship or they have it in different forms because everybody's yeah. different. You yeah. know? Um, but the fact that we can experience that as human beings, uh, you know, just as Jesus did um, coming yeah. to earth, um, We've got that relationship, which is so strong and so valuable. And uh, you've preached many times that that cannot be broken. Absolutely, absolutely. Which, um, and, uh, and in those situations where you are, we are broken, you know, we have to admit that we're broken. Yep. <laughs> which sometimes for a proud person like me is a bit difficult, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know because I, I i would like to i've always been a go-getter you know yeah. what I try and achieve and um, uh, and sometimes it is hard for the people that are the go-getters maybe the wealthier people you know it's harder for them to find that relationship yeah well jesus um, was pretty clear on that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but um but uh, at the at the um, birth of Jesus, there were the shepherds, as you pointed out, and there were also the wise men who were quite wealthy. I think. Absolutely. So yeah. he he comes to all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that real feeling of that relationship is so valuable. You know, yeah. when when it when um, uh, when people let you down, maybe not through their own fault, but because they're human. You know, there's always God and Jesus to fall back on. Yeah, amen, amen. Mm. And, and I have no doubt because, I mean, I think we as a church are, have been privileged to journey with you on this, Paul. I know that, 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 as I was saying before we came on camera, we can, it's very difficult for us to understand exactly what you've been through, to feel it in the way that you've felt it. But yeah. I think it's been it, your openness, both of you, your openness through this has shone a light on who you are as people, beautiful people, but also shone a light on who, who God is. Mm. And, and I sense that God has really used your experiences to speak into other people's lives. And so I, I want to thank you today because it's, it's affected me this year, uh, uh, just what you've been through in a very different way. But I think we're a different church because of what you've shared, you know, both of you um, mm. with us. And I thank you for that because I know that in some of those moments, probably the last thing you wanted to do was share it with anybody. <laughs> um, well, sometimes yeah. it helps, actually. Well, I, mate, think, yeah. I think because we did, um, we were very well aware that there were so many people praying for us. In fact, yeah. we had a Christmas card today from a second cousin who's got health problems of his own and I think his wife recently had a stroke he says on his card we've prayed for you every day Amen. that means yeah. a lot yeah yeah well it, it makes a difference right we believe it it changes things yeah. and, I, and I, you know you are testimony to that you know and what you've been through mm. thank you so much for sharing with us today we're talking about unexpected paths and I'm sure that 2020 was full of unexpected paths for you know Paul and Hillary that we as a church are praying for you as we go into 2021 too and um, we'll be praying for you. you you mentioned at the start that you've got some results that are due when when are they due Paul about the 12th of January okay well we we have a we have a prayer day as a church on the 6th of January and uh, we're just kind of beginning to put that together I, I I'd love, if you're happy with it, that we'll include you within that, because wouldn't it be great that we could all pray for, for some more positive results uh, at that point as well? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thanks. Yeah. So thank you for sharing with us today. Um, we will hopefully see you in person 
at some point <laughs> very yeah, soon. Yeah. We, hope, we, we hope so, definitely. Yeah. All right. Take care. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. 
When Herod realised that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. I promised short and that's what you're going to get because from all of the conversations we've heard this morning, I sense they've told us enough about unexpected paths, real life stories of real people discovering what it means to journey with God, whatever the situation and wherever it might take them. I know that God has spoken through the words of Paul and Hillary, through Etiv, through Sarah and Alex. So trust me when I say I'm not going to labour it. Even when I say I simply want to highlight three things from this passage of scripture that Mary's just read to us. Three things. Firstly, there was an escape. The word said, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Unfortunately, whenever the word escape appears in anything, we tend to romanticise it. This is Steve McQueen jumping a wire. Or Andy Dufresne crawling through a pipe in the Shawshank Redemption. Or Buzz Lightyear escaping from Sid in Toy Story. This escape isn't any of those. This is three people being woken in the middle of the night by an angel and told to go. Told to run with no more than they can carry between them because there is an evil and tyrannical leader that is about to go on a killing spree. This is all of those stories that we see and hear on the news and think that couldn't happen here. I mean, imagine what went through Joseph's, Joseph's head in those moments. Imagine what his words were to Mary when he woke her. Imagine the journey that was ahead of them. And as you do that, recognise their trust in God. Going because they'd been guided by God before and so they were prepared to trust him that he would guide them again. So first of all, there was an escape. Secondly, this happened. This happened. When Herod realised that, that he'd been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all of the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under. The world that Jesus entered was scarred by the evil atrocities of a king, rather ironically named Herod the Great. Right from the beginning, Jesus was placed at the heart of a story that was about brokenness, about pain, about anguish, that featured tears, 
and loss. It was the world that he inhabited then and it's the world that he inhabits today. Do you know what? In 2020, Jesus walked with us every step of the way and he's not going anywhere in 2021. Thirdly, Jesus ended up exactly where God had planned him to be. The words of the scriptures say he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. So in the midst of all of this, the story that we've encountered over these last few weeks, God had a plan for Jesus. Now, it's always a bit problematic when we start talking about the plans that God has for us, because he gives us free will. And we have to think that if Jesus was fully human, as the Bible tells us he was, then he had that free will too. And yet God had a plan for him. It's one of the things about God that makes me realise that I'm only human, that I can't and probably shouldn't understand how it all works and fits together, because that's for God to know. His ask of me and of you is simply to trust him. Whatever happens, whatever path it is that he chooses for us to take or asks for us to take. Just ask Etiv or Sarah and Alex or Paul and Hillary about that. Church family, 2020 has been the strangest of years, the strangest of adventures, if you can call it that. But I know that he was there with us every step of the way, leading and guiding us, loving and carrying us. I don't know where 2021 is going to take us, either individually or as a church family. But as we look ahead, let us do so trusting him and looking forward to the testimonies that we will hear of his love and grace when, God willing, we meet in person next Christmas. Amen.
Church family, let's pray together. Father God, thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that you are a God who never leaves us, never forsakes us. It says that in your word and we thank you for that, Father God. But thank you also that you are a God who leads us and guides us. Help us, Lord, to be people who listen to you who watch for where you are moving so that we might follow you, Father God. Forgive us, Lord, that sometimes we choose to kind of go our own way. I pray for myself, Father God, for us as a church family, for us as a nation and a world, that in 2021, we might be people who follow the path that you would have us go on. Because, Lord God, we know that your path is a good path. Your word says that you give good things to those who trust you. And, Lord, we trust you. We want to trust you more. Lord, your word doesn't promise that everything will be rosy. Everything will be easy. And so, Lord, I pray particularly for those in our church family and community who are trusting you in the midst of difficulty at this time. I pray, Lord, for those who are suffering from illness. Whether that be physically or emotionally and mentally, simply because of the challenges that we're facing at the moment. I pray, Lord, that your healing and your peace might be upon them. And Father God, I pray for those in our community who may even in these last few days have been impacted by the flooding around Newport Pagnum. Lord, I pray not only that they might, not, might know your peace, but that we might be a shining light to them. We might show them some of your love in the way that we respond. And Father God, as we look ahead to a new year, with all the uncertainties that it brings, we thank you that you are a God of love, of joy, of peace and of hope, Father God. 
Keep our eyes fixed on you. Show us the way to go. We simply want to be your people. And we want others to know and experience who you are, Father God, to know the love that you have for them too. Thank you that you are our Father and our friend. You are our King, you are our Saviour. You are everything that we need. We love you, Father God, and we lift your name high. In Jesus' name, Amen. Church family, thank you for journeying with us in 2020. What a strange year it's been, but it would have been very dull if you hadn't come on that journey with us. So I wanna say thank you for that. I wanna say an extra special thank you just to all of those who've helped us continue being church right the way through this period, whether it's David and Joe and Gail and Tim in the office, whether it's Ali and Josh and Matthias who particularly helped with getting this stuff out on a Sunday morning, whether it's all those of you who've offered pastoral care and support for one another at this time, I just wanna say thank you. And I look forward to journeying with you further in 2021. May you know God's blessing as we end this year and begin a new one. Amen.